All right, guys, uh, this is topic 6.8 and 6.9. Uh, we are getting close to the end of unit six here. So we're going to continue with our discussion today about renewable energy. Uh, and we're going to focus today on two types, hydroelectric power uh, and solar energy. Again, these are types of renewable energy. So going back to this um, picture that we had from yesterday, you know, this lists for you uh, really all the different types of energy uh, that are available to us, uh, you know, not only in the United States, but in the world. And again, this top you know, row here is showing us all of our non-renewables. Uh, we talked about these the last couple of weeks. And then all of these um, resources in green, these are all of your renewable resources. But again, we split them into potentially renewable Things like wood and biofuels and you know, biomass, all that stuff. And then, of course, we have the non-depletables, which is what we're going to focus on today uh, and on Thursday. So non-depletables are things that, you know, we're not really worried about running out of. You know, we're just kind of worried about how we can use them more consistently. Um, and we're going to start today with, with water. Um, you know, water can be a resource that is extremely abundant, obviously. And as long as that water is moving, as long as it's flowing, we can actually use the kinetic energy of that water to generate electricity. In fact, this is pretty much what we use this resource for as, as, far, you know, as far as an energy resource. You know, we use it uh, to generate electricity for us. It's called hydroelectricity. Now, we're going to take a look today at three different um, I guess, styles or different types of um, hydroelectric power as far as how it's generated. Uh, one of them is called a run of the river system, which I'll show you in a second. Another one is called a water impoundment. This is a big fancy word for a dam. And then we have something called a tidal system. Okay. All three of these are just different ways that we can generate electricity Again, using the kinetic energy of water. So we'll start here with what we call a run of the river system. This is also known as a micro system. So this would be, for example, used um, you know, if we want to just generate electricity, you know, maybe for a single home or maybe a couple of homes. It wouldn't be used on a really large scale. That's what we call the micro system. But take a look at this picture here. You know, again, you, you need to have flowing water. All right, so here's our little river, or our stream, or whatever it is. And then we have a little home here, okay? And you'll notice that there's electrical lines that are going into the home. So kind of like a little mini grid system here. Um, but then we have this structure over here. This is, this is the powerhouse. This is where the electricity is generated. Now, how is that generated? You know, you, you need a generator. You need a turbine. Right, just like you would if it was a coal power plant or a nuclear power plant. But this one here is using, instead of coal or using nuclear fuel, it's actually using water to spin the turbine. Now, where does that water come from? It comes from the river, right? So that water is going to flow in here through this intake. Okay, where some, you know, this is well upstream you know, from, from the powerhouse. So that water will enter through that intake and it'll travel through this system of pipes. <clears throat> they call it a penstock. Don't worry about that word so much. But when that water travels in, and usually it travels through gra just by gravity. Sometimes it's pumped, but usually it's just through gravity. And then it'll enter the, the powerhouse, it'll spin the turbine, it'll operate the generator, and you get electricity that's produced that can power up this house. All right, any excess water will just flow right back into the river. All right, so, I mean, run of the river. I mean, you, you need to have flowing water for this to work. So, I mean, think about the limitations to that. You know, what happens if there's a drought and let's say the river dries up? You know, let's say that, that it gets cold and the river freezes. And I guess you don't get any electricity, right? So, um, you know, this is all, um, you know, there, there are some challenges to this. One of the big challenges is just making sure that the river flows um, so that you can have a constant influx of, of kinetic energy coming into that powerhouse. Uh, this is um, a little bit larger. This is a, a much larger scale. This is a water impoundment system, otherwise known as a dam. 
So again, here we have the dam here, okay? And, the, and again, these structures are millions of millions of dollars to construct, but basically they're placed right in the middle of a river. Now behind the dam, you'll, you'll notice the water level rising. So when that water level rises, you know, that's usually going to um, displace a lot of things that are on land. Uh, this is called the reservoir. This is where the water will build up. You know, it'll be blocked, so it's going to rise. Because this water is moving, right? This is all kinetic energy. That water is traveling in a certain direction. When you build that structure in the middle, it's going to block it so that it can't move as fast, and it's going to build up behind. So that's the reservoir. But you'll notice down below, under the water, you'll see the intake here, right? So the water will flow through the intake, and we can open and close that intake valve. So we can stop the water from coming in if we want to. We can open it up if we want to. But as that water comes in, it's going to spin the turbine. It's going to operate the generator. And it's going to generate electricity. And you'll notice that there's transmission lines. It's a grid out here you know, that can carry electricity to where it needs to go. And then we have the outflow as well. All right. So a water impoundment system, again, is just a dam. And within that dam... You know, there's a powerhouse where we, you, where you have the turbine and you have the generator. Uh, this is called a tidal system. Again, it kind of operates on the same principles, right? You must have moving water in order to spin a turbine and to operate a generator. Now, this one, instead of it being in a river, you know, it's usually it's usually using the the, the ocean, you know, the ocean waters and the tides rising and lowing, uh, lowering, lowering in order to, to, to cause that kinetic flow of, of water. So for example, when the tide rolls in, you know, that water's moving in this direction and it'll spin the turbine. You know, when the tide rolls out again, it's gonna move in the opposite direction, but it's still gonna spin the turbine. So as long as that water is oscillating back and forth, back and forth, then you're gonna have that turbine to spin, operates the generator and you have electricity. So you know, run of the river system you know, is a micro system. An impoundment, a dam, is a macro system. It's a much larger system. And then tidal systems are, are again, are put in place uh, that uses the gravitational pull of the balloon. That's what causes the tides. And that's what creates this kinetic energy that we can convert into electricity. All right, so let's talk about some of the negatives and positives. You know, advantages, you know, after the dam is constructed, very little fossil fuels are used, if any. Now, there's a ton of fossil fuels that are used to construct the dam, but after it's built, we really don't use anything at all. So there's not any air pollution that's generated after the dam is built. So, you know, there, there's very little um, pollutants. You know, once dams are constructed, there's no solid waste that's generated. There's no air pollution, no water pollution. But again, that's after construction. During construction, you do get some of that. Um, it's cheaper electricity. You know, generally, hydroelectricity is cheaper than um, you know, coal-generated electricity or uh, nuclear. You, know, you might be paying 11 to maybe 15 cents per kilowatt hour, let's say, for a coal power plant, where you might pay 7 to 8 cents for um, a kil or per kilowatt hour from hydroelectricity. But it's generally cheaper. Um, the areas behind the dam, you know, the reservoir area can be used for you know, recreational areas, economic opportunities for towns and cities, um, you know, fishing, this recreational boating, whatever. Um, so that's kind of an advantage there. Uh, disadvantages, again, anytime we're, we're, we're blocking a river, you know, that is going to affect the land. It's going to affect soil. Um, it's going to affect the ecosystem. It's going to affect biodiversity. So anytime we, we, we build a dam, we, we, we talked about Free Gorges Dam a couple of weeks ago. You know, and how and how expensive that 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 project was to build, but it also displaced thousands of people because the reservoir behind the dam flooded the uh, the flood zone. You know, so people had to move away. I mean, it is what it is. But you know, those are some, kind of some some issues. It really does affect the natural ecosystem. Another thing that dams can do is they can cause something called siltation. Now, siltation is when the sediments that naturally flow with the, with, with the water, they get blocked, you know, from traveling downstream. 
So what, what happens is they build up behind the rail. I'm going to show you a picture of this. I'm going to come back to this slide. You know, right here, okay, here we have a dam. You'll notice the river here in front. You notice how the water, like kind of right in front of the dam, is really, really murky and brown compared to some of the other water back here. <clears throat> well, that's because all of this dirt, all the silt that's in the water, uh, just deposits at the base of the dam is it can't get to the other side. So you know, what we have to do is we have to dig all of that um, all that dirt out, all that silt out of there. We have to usually you know, put it somewhere. Usually they just put it in a landfill or they just dump it somewhere on land somewhere. Um, but it's usually done with heavy equipment. You know, there's fossil fuels that are used. Um, sometimes if the siltation gets too great uh, and it's not removed in time, they may have to just deconstruct the dam, you know, which is, is really expensive and, and not good for anybody. So uh, siltation is a real big problem anytime you have these huge you know, impoundments right in the middle of a moving body of water. You know, all that dirt accumulates at the base and it does have to be removed. All right, we're going to stop the video here um, just because I want to make sure that 